November 16, 2021. The Canadian province of British Columbia experiences a historic storm producing epic amounts of rainfall, triggering devastating landslides that sadly kill as many as three people. Canadian officials describe the flooding as a once-in-a-500-year event. In the southwest tip of the province sits the Port of Vancouver, Canada's largest and most critical port. The storm effectively cuts off operations, leading to a dangerous hit to the supply chain. In today's video, we examine this tragedy and look into how a crisis at the Port of Vancouver could have a massive impact on the world economy. Before we begin, I want to stress the importance of this harbor. Through here, more than 50% of all Canadian container traffic is processed. It is the heart of the country's economy. Weed, canola, and coking coal are now at a standstill, critical exports that supply a large portion of the world. Given pre-existing inflationary pressures in the food and steel industry, the world was counting on these exports. And now, on the other side, imports too have ground to a halt, and cargo ships are stacking up offshore. The crisis comes at a time when the port of Vancouver was already handling record amounts of cargo. Even before the pandemic had started, existing articles were suggesting that a surge in container traffic was troubling the port. If you live in the U.S., you may have not even heard about the storm, despite it being one of the worst in Canada's history. As you're about to see, there are serious implications to the worldwide economy, and it seems that officials are downplaying the severity of this event. The surrounding infrastructure has been cut off, and due to Vancouver being a choke point nestled south of the Pacific Ranges, the situation is dire. One of the best explanations is done by Sal, a shipping expert who runs his very own YouTube channel called What is Going On With Shipping? Take a listen to him break down this crisis. Uh, uh, in flood-stricken areas, the rail lines between Cannonopes, I'm not sure how to say that, I apologize, Canada, and Vancouver remain closed as both the CN the Canadian National and Canadian Pacific crews and engineering teams continue to clear debris and conduct repairs at multiple locations. So that is the big issue right here. I want to come over to this map. There we go. And show you what they're talking about right here. This is a map of class one railways. There's Vancouver. There's Kamloops or Kamloops. I'm not sure again how to pronounce that. So I apologize. But the severing is right through in this area here in the Fraser River Valley region. And those rail lines are essential. If you zoom out in this map, one of the things you'll see is how that single stretch there connects all the way into Alberta, into Saskatchewan, into Manitoba. So the so as you just saw, the arteries feeding the port have been cut off, leaving officials scrambling for a fix. Many have claimed that services should be back in operation in days, but as I'm about to show you, this is likely a stretch considering the damage done by the storm. Looking at marine traffic data shows that container ships are indeed piling up in the waters outside the harbor, and figuring out how to avoid making Vancouver look like Long Beach is a task left for the railway and government officials who are already overloaded with projects meant to alleviate the human aspect of this storm. The media has been largely quiet on this issue, but several people on YouTube have done an excellent job filling the information gap. Pilot Yellow is a channel largely dedicated to introducing people to the life of a helicopter pilot. He happens to be from the area, and in his most recent upload, Misha takes us up in the air for an aerial view of the damages. The footage is both spectacular and frightening. This is just a few clips. I've linked both of the videos in the description below if you're looking to watch it in its entirety. Nick off Kilo, we're up at 1800 now. I have the Bell 206 going by and we're just avoiding that smoke as well. I found uh, Long Seamus Mountain. Nick off Kilo, I check a mark report clear to zone. Man, you guys, this is crazy. So uh, in the fall, like around September, we went on an RV trip and we rented an RV from this place right down here. And I saw this smoke this morning trying to figure out what it was. And it's the entire RV place burning down. That is just an inferno just going up. The entire facility. And then here's the rest of Sumas as well. So Highway 1 is uh, flooded behind us. I just saw that. And then it's uh, hugely flooded out here in front of us as well. Just completely gone. I don't know how much damage has been caused to the highway as well. But I'm sure it's not great. All the debris and everything cleared off of that one. So that's really good. So I'm showing you guys Highway okay. 7 right now on the way into Hope. Left hand turn out uh, heading back north side of the north, uh, Fraser River for Langley. 
I'm no expert on road repair, but many of the pictures coming out of British Columbia suggest that fixing these issues in days would be impossible. To lessen panic, we expect officials to downplay the seriousness of the crisis as they begin the process of damage assessment and repair. But we can get a clear picture of what is going on by watching the key players for clues. For example, Tech Resources is a company that produces coking coal in the region. Their mines in Elk Valley produce much of the export of coal in Canada, coal that is railed to Vancouver for overseas export, primarily to Asia. Tech is also extremely transparent with investors, sometimes to a fault. If we check their investor relations page, we can see an update regarding the heavy rain impact on the region from November 16th. It says the following. Tech Resource Limited today reported that its logistics chain between West Coast terminals and BC operations has been temporarily disrupted due to heavy rain, flooding, and mudslides. Tech has implemented measures to mitigate the effects of the disruption, diverting some trains to Ridley terminals in Prince Rupert, CP and CN have begun repairs but do not currently have estimated return to service dates. Now this is the important part. The overall impact and any potential effect on Q4 sales will depend on the duration of the logistics chain disruption. Production at our operations has not been impacted at this time. Four days later and we have not received any sort of update. Operations as far as we can tell continue to be interrupted. How long this can remain stable nobody knows. Tech claims operations are unaffected. But with nowhere to move the coal, it's only a matter of time before we start to see the impacks. If the crisis is indeed severe, look out for tech to stop mining in the Elk Valley region. There's only so much capacity for inventory in its logistical network, but with coking prices near historic highs, tech will look to do everything in its power to continue production. Thank you guys for watching. If you live in the area, I would love to hear what you have to say about the situation. Please leave a comment down below. And as always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed.